morning. I would like to welcome everyone to our service of worship here today at the United Protestant Church of Sydney River. And I would like us all to begin with uh, taking a moment to quiet ourselves, to still ourselves as we prepare today. Extravagant God, we gather in the sacred space, guests at a feast of your boundless gifts. Stretch out your canopy of grace, your sheltered wings, that we may delight in your love which never runs out. Amen. Our first hymn today is Arise, Your Light Has Come. gospel reading today comes from the gospel of Luke, reading at chapter 3, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning into their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Here ends our reading. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I want to talk today about Luke, about what Luke is doing, what Luke is writing, and about what we find in our gospel reading today. I want to do that with a a little bit of history first, a little bit of factual stuff, things that we need to know about Luke and about the Bible, about the gospels, before we even begin, things we need to keep in our mind. Um, You know... Just a couple of months ago, I was reading a little bit of the uh, Decameron, a little book by Giovanni Baccia Uh It was a book that he wrote that was a 
wrote during the plague, and it was about the plague and about what he was seeing as the plague was happening around him. And it, I've read many things over the years throughout my life about the time of the plague, mid-1300s, and the bubonic plague was raging. People there didn't know what was going on. We know now what happened. It was the fleas of rats that were infecting people. Uh, we know now what could be done to stop that. We know now what could be done to treat that. But at that time, they didn't know that. When I read this book, when I was reading this book, I was seeing it through different eyes because I was seeing the fear and the anxiety, the trauma that people were going through in a different way. Because when he was writing, when Giovanni was writing this, they, he did not know what was causing this. The people did not know what to do. The people did not know where this was coming. They didn't know how to frame this in their lives, how to understand what was happening to them. And all around them, people were dying. Some were, whole villages were dying. Sometimes a whole village would die and one person would survive. And they just did not know how to understand this. And we know now that a third of the population of the world had died during this plague. How's that for pandemic reading? With that in mind, we have to look back at our Gospels and understand that the Gospel of Mark was the first Gospel written. It was written around 50 in the Common Era. It was written years after Jesus had died. And Luke and Matthew were written some between the mid-80s, between 80 and 90. And some 30 years later, the Gospel of John was written. So these were written after Jesus had died, after the events of Jesus, after the person of Jesus was no longer with them and was only had the stories and only had the effect that Jesus had had on the people around him at that time. We have to remember, too, that Luke really hadn't met Jesus. He had only heard stories of him. He had only heard stories of him. We assume he was a, a Greek, a Gentile, we assume that the congregations that he was writing to were not at Jewish congregations. And we also have to realize that uh, unlike the other gospels, uh, Luke wrote the gospel uh, to end with Jesus pointing people towards the church. And he wrote a part two. He wrote the Acts of the, God, Acts of the uh, Apostles where it begins with the birth of that church and how that church developed and how that church grew for a number of years. In writing those, all of the gospel writers had an understanding of what had happened. When they were writing about the birth of Jesus, they already knew about the death of Jesus. They already knew about the passion of Jesus. They already knew about the beginning of the church. They were farther back, farther ahead in history. And when they look back, some of the the nuances, some of the passion, some of the some of the feelings were not there as they were in, say, Giovanni's book, as they were going through trying to understand. So you have to keep that in mind. You also have to understand that uh, Luke and Matthew both had the Gospel of Mark in front of them. They both had the Gospel of Mark they wrote from. And they also, people believe, uh, scholars believe, that they may have had another book that was similar, because there are two similarities, similar stories that they tell, almost word for word. They call that the Q document. We have never found that. Uh, and there were other readings. There were other books that they had, plus the stories, the oral traditions that were going around. They were also writing to different communities, and the emphasis they put on the stories of Jesus uh, the use of the stories of Jesus varied amongst them. And we also know that uh, we basically, all of the Gospels believe that the ministry of Jesus began at that baptism. Mark actually begins the Gospel at the baptism. Matthew and Luke go back further to the birth, moving up in Jesus' ministry starting at the baptism. And the Gospel of John goes all the way back to the very beginning. And the beginning of creation was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we have all those emphasis. But Luke differed in the other Gospels in a, in a few ways. Uh, Luke had a much more conscious 
awareness of Jesus' effect on the poor and the destitute and Jesus' ministry, the church's ministry to the poor and to the destitute and trying to uphold them and uplift them and uplift them. There was a more of an emphasis. Luke also had a more of an emphasis on prayer, prayer life, and the work of the Spirit with Jesus and within the church. Um, Luke also... Luke also concentrated more on repentance and forgiveness. We all know when we all have a think we have an understanding of repentance and forgiveness. Repentance being that I've done something that I know I shouldn't have done and I'm sorry for it and I won't do it again. Uh, a repentance that uh, there are things that I know I shouldn't have done, should do and I chose not to do it and getting forgiveness after, making repentance. There's also the sense of repentance is a, a turning away from God and God's plan for us and, and recognizing that and turning back. But there's also another emphasis uh, that we find in Luke a lot, and it's more of a, a, a repentance from ignorance, a repentance from ignorance, a repentance from an acceptance of my eyes being open and I see the world in a different way. And because I see the world in a different way, I respond in a different way. Respond in a different way. So all of that is part of Luke that is not necessarily a major part of the other Gospels or more of an emphasis in Luke. We also have to remember that the baptism itself varied in the stories. Buried in the stories. When John talks about the baptism of Jesus in the Gospel of John, he has John the Baptist witnessing that Jesus went down into the water, Jesus came out of the water, the heavens opened, and the Spirit descended in the form of a dove, and a voice came from God saying, this is my beloved. Matthew and, and uh, Mark have a similar story where Jesus goes into the water, comes out of the water, the heavens open, the Spirit descends upon Jesus in the form of a dove, and God speaks, this is my beloved of whom I am well pleased. Luke's changed his story. He has Jesus going into the water, coming forth from the water, being baptized with others, and then afterwards praying. And as he was praying, the spirit, the heavens open, a spirit comes down on the form of a dove, and a voice comes from heaven. And it doesn't say, this is my son. It says, you are my son, my beloved. You are my child, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Jesus is hearing it. It's a more of a personal message. More of a person. It's in first person. I hearing it. I'm hearing it. Jesus is hearing it. So that's different. That's different. Also, as I said, Mark starts with the baptism, but Matthew and Luke go back to the birth of Jesus. And in doing so, they talk about a genealogy. And Matthew traces the genealogy of Jesus back to Abraham, who was the father of the Jewish nation. So he's tracing Jesus as part of the Jewish faith, part of the Jewish nation, all the way back to the founder. Luke, however, does something different. And what Luke does is he traces Jesus all the way back to Abraham, but further back to Adam, the son of God. The son of God, before even the Jewish nations, before Jesus was a Jew, Jesus was the son of God. Jesus was the son of God, before nations were developed, before nations happened, before all of that happened with Noah. So the lineage is different, and the message is different of who this Jesus was to be. Now that's a lot of information. I want you to let that uh, shake yourself and let that settle in. Because this next year, we're going to be talking about Luke a lot. And everything that we talk about Luke, we have to have all of that information in our, in our, in our being so that we understand things a little bit different. So just sit with that for a minute. Now this is the sermon part. Jesus hears the word of God saying, 
you are my son, you are my child, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And then he goes off into the desert. After he, go, after he prays, he goes off, here's that, he goes off into the desert for 40 days, as he does with Matthew and, and uh, Mark. Not with John, but with Matthew and Mark. And it's like an affirmation of who he was. It's an affirmation of who he felt himself called to be. It was an affirmation of the ministry that he felt he had to do. And he goes off into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights and prepares himself. Prepares himself. Again, the emphasis is on prayer. The emphasis is on preparation. Now, all of the gospel writers are writing in a sense of, of who this Jesus was for them and how this Jesus, this man, this person, this message, this ministry foreshadowed who they were to become. Who they were to become. We need to understand how this message of Jesus foreshadows who we are to become. I have a sense that when Jesus was hearing those words, you are my beloved, you are my, you are my child, I am well pleased coming from God, there was a sense that that purpose that he was driven towards, that purpose, as I said earlier, of, of being, uh, of holding up the poor, of, of holding up those who were destitute, of looking to the needs of others and trying to find some comfort for them, trying to find some help from them, in that sense of compassion for all, in that sense of, in that sense of uh, the equality of all of us, uh, regardless of who we are or of how we look or of how we were brought up or of where we come from or of how we sound or of all those other stupid things we use to define ourselves, to separate ourselves from others. That sense of, of compassion for the other, the other, was all there that God was looking at that God was pleased with. And I think for us, there is a sense that we need to find that same commitment, we need to find that same drive that Jesus had in our dealings with the world, in our dealings with each other. As we walk this path, as we walk, take this journey. As we take this journey. And like Jesus, I think it can only be found in prayer. And not the prayer that, oh, I hope I pray to God I win the million dollar lottery. But that prayer of, of listening. What do you want me to do? What would you have me do? Listening to the needs of the world around us. Where am I being called to serve? How am I being called to serve? How am I being called to be? And listening. Remember when I was saying repentance was a, 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 a repentance from ignorance? It's being open to see the world in a different way. To see the world in a different way. I know many times I've seen the world in a different way and I look back on myself and I think to myself, how could I have done that? What was I thinking? And kicking myself for it. That's where the forgiveness comes because there's a sense of, okay, I did the best that I could or we've done the best that we could with the information that we had at the time that happened. Now we know something different and we do something different and we're able to forgive ourselves because we've changed and how we've seen the world, but we've also changed in how we respond to the world. Respond to the world. And in that sense, in that sense, we become the children of God. In that sense, we become adopted by God. We enter the kingdom of God. I think it's important that uh, Luke and his genealogy went right back to God. 
Jesus, the son of, the son of, the son of, the son of, son of Adam, the son of God. Because we are all children of God. All of us. And when we can sense that, and we can sense that when I am helping somebody else, I'm helping my brother or my sister, it becomes a different thing then I'm helping someone who needs help because they can't cope right now. It's something that's more personal. That's something that's a part of me. And it's a need and it's a drive to do something that's not based on charity, but it's based on doing the right thing, based on feeling good about them and feeling good about myself. Knowing it's the right thing to do. It's the good thing to do. It's the God thing to do. And when that happens, we become the child of God, the beloved, with whom God is well pleased. Amen. Let us pray. You whose presence is revealed in the ways of wisdom. Make your home among us today. In a world of war and distress and in the uncertainties of our own lives, we need your wisdom to dwell within us. We speak now of those places that await your wisdom. You whose presence is revealed in an everlasting light, shine out among us today. Illumine the places we need in need of transformation so we can move in a new direction. And illumine the places where your good news is evident so our hearts can be inspired and give thanks. We speak now of those places that await your light to shine. You, whose presence is revealed within your adopted children, enliven us with your spirit. Open our hearts and fill us with compassion that we may see the need in our community and respond as heirs of your love. We speak now of those places that await the love of your children to shine. And now let us join in the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For the offerings that have come in this past week, let us bow our heads as we bless them. Let us pray. You have given us the greatest gift of all, O God. You have put your love in our hearts, and now we want to share it with the world. May our giving of this offering be only one of the ways in which we share your love with others. Amen. Our final hymn is Let There Be Light.
Let us depart, God's beloved, showered in abundant blessings, seeking the reflection of Christ in all we meet, and being a reflection of Christ to all we greet. Amen. Thank you.